When you think of top controller players, you usually think of ones that play on a PC. Ghost Aiden, Nick Merckx, or Faze Sway are some typical answers. But what about console players? Well, there's one PS4 player on the rise lately that's been grabbing everyone's attention. Hi guys, it's Dan, and we are back with another analysis video. This time, we'll be looking at Razer X, a console player and content creator who has surprised the community in the last couple months with some insanely smooth gameplay. Fortnite is known for its issues on consoles, mainly consisting of stability problems and a lack of settings. So for somebody to be able to perform at such a high level on console is a feat within itself. We'll be breaking down a few clips of his gameplay and explain exactly what he does right that helps him drop 20 bombs and win fights in creative. Before we get started, Pro Guides has a small announcement to make. We are adding a ton of new features to our site, which include 1. Exclusive guide videos for our Pro members every single day. 2. ProPass now grants access to all games, such as League of Legends, Smash Brothers, CSGO, and Overwatch. More free coaching passes and points for Instapro if you're a Pro member. So head on over to Pro Guides by clicking the link in the description below. Also, don't forget to drop a like if you like these kind of videos. Building is notoriously difficult on a controller, but not for Razer X. Let's start by looking at how he wins his build battles. Razer begins by cranking some 90s, but gets blocked by a ramp at the top. No worries, because he knows what to do. To prevent the enemy from editing onto him, he places his own wall behind the metal ramp. Had Razer not put up the wall, his opponent could have gone for a quick edit play into a shot. Instead, he gets to turn around safely and work on taking over high ground. When Razer gets to the top and sees his opponent ramping toward him, he sets up this really smart pyramid at his feet. The pyramid prevents any further ramps from being built there. Only one pyramid here instead of two makes his enemy think he can still build up to his right, which he can, but it won't make a difference. Allowing that path is essentially bait so that Razer can get a shot as he tries to build up. After landing a meaty hit, Razer messes up by editing down into an empty box. This is where knowing high ground retakes comes in handy. While it's important to know the specific build patterns in a retake, look at what's essentially happening here. Razer doesn't build up without first covering open angles. He does this here by putting floors and pyramids above him, as well as walls towards his opponent. He wants those pieces here to keep him alive as he retakes. Razer continues for height and eventually notices that his enemy is trailing behind on his ramp. Using that knowledge, he sets up a combo for the Alim. He edits through his cone, then turns and places a ramp and another cone at the top. He hits a quick 90 to turn around, then puts a wall up. Knowing that this is the exact spot his enemy is going to run to, he edits a window and places a pyramid. With the window as a distraction, Razer can jump to the side and land the killing blow. One major aspect of being a creative god has to do with build combos. Essentially, you're building or editing in a predetermined fashion. They're meant to be fast and effective, and in a lot of situations, give you control in a fight. They can also be simple, or as we saw at the end here, complex. But one thing's for sure, the way Razer uses them is deadly. Here's a much quicker fight that showcases two combos, one simple and one more difficult. The first combo here is basic. Razer shoots, then goes for control of the floor and pyramid. To finish the combo, he would edit through both for another shot. However, his opponent gets the floor, so he sets up combo number two. Knowing the side his enemy is going to try to ramp out of, Razer puts up a wall and edits a window so that he can rotate a ramp to block off his enemy. It works, and Razer ends up trapping this poor dude for the kill. And just so you understand what we mean by a predetermined combo, here he is doing the same set of moves in two other fights. So what can we take away from watching Razer build? Well, a major component of his wins there had to do with structure control. He's always trying to control every piece that he thinks might come into play later. He was able to block his opponent off with his own builds in a few spots during that fight. Not only can it keep you safe, but it can create more kill opportunities. Knowing certain build combos and when to use them can make finishing kills a whole lot simpler during build fights, and is one of the reasons he can dominate players repeatedly. Something Razer X is known for are his high kill solo squad games. It's become much more difficult to win solo squad games ever since they removed the siphon effects from the mode. It's just that fighting up to four players on the same team can feel impossible. However, with defensive gameplay and proper flanking, it can be much easier. Let's take a look at how Razer does it. Razer's heading for Doghouse in Pleasant, but a team lands there slightly before he does. He takes the front door for floor loot, which is generally better than a single chest. Plus, there's a higher chance you'll find a shotgun, a dominant weapon for the early game. Razer doesn't really build at all during this part of the game. Sure, he could farm up mats, but he's going for a high kill game and needs to farm these players before they die to someone else. With no building, there's another mechanic he's using to play on the defensive. Notice how often he stops to utilize third-person peeking to look around corners. It's helping him clear corners without showing his body, and it's getting him most of the kills here. When you do peek to shoot, you always want to do it to the right. Right side peeks are better for a few reasons, but the main one is that you can shoot your opponent before they can shoot you. 
Just to cut away real quick, take a look at footage from Razer's first Fortnite video. This must have been filmed way back during Season 2 or something, but just take a look at how he plays in this situation. He doesn't build at all in this clip. Instead, he's looking for right side angles to hold and lets his opponents come to him. That way, he can have the upper hand when it comes to landing a shot. His building skills might have not been where they are today, but his aiming and peak fundamentals were on point. Ok, now back to Season X. After a few more kills, Razor rotates to a fight happening on the other side of Pleasant. It's third party time. He could shoot at this player on the roof from here, but would give away his position doing so. Then he might just get focused and held by a team with high ground. Instead, he uses the time they're fighting to close the gap and get into a more effective range. Using the surprise factor, he's able to sneak up to shotgun range on a guy for an easy elimination. Now that it's mid-game and Razor has more materials to work with, he can use his supreme building skills to end fights much more safely. Here's a third party situation Razor finds. He instantly lands a clean pump shot for the knock, with his first reaction being to build cover after. Notice his opponent doesn't have all his walls covered. Razor drops down to place his own for a quick edit. This edit here, where you edit only the left part toward you, is generally the best choice to make when you take ramp control in a box. Going back to the right side peak stuff, it creates a terrible angle for your enemy should they try to trade shots with you. That's why you always see pro players use this specific edit in similar situations. Skipping ahead to the end game, let's see how Razor secures the win. He spots a team and immediately heads for the top of their build. Razor wants to control height, but not by building up. He instead controls his high ground by applying pressure as they try to retake it. He'll also place some floors and cones to block them should they come close. Razor decides to go for the left side peak on the attacker behind him, which ends up costing him some health. Left side peaks are risky for this exact reason. Even though he lands his own shot, he can't build cover in time and takes a big hit. But even so, he's able to lose his opponent's focus and drop down for a kill on his teammate. The enemy here hates when his friend gets downed and proceeds to go Rambo on Razor. Heavy sniping into somebody else's box during the endgame is just asking to get trap killed and is something you rarely want to do. Alright, now here's the last fight of the game. It's the final two squads fighting each other, so it's the perfect opportunity to push in. Razor gets tagged a bit by combat and loses the guy's position, so he does a quick little cone over himself so he can heal. Placing a pyramid to heal inside of is a way to keep yourself protected while rationing material. He doesn't know where the last player is in this situation, and it sure would suck to get sniped at the end here. Anyways, the cone works out because he's able to spot his enemy in it and edits out into some shots. Once Razor spots both players, he focuses hard on tracking their positions. He does this by looking through the structures and listening for audio cues. By being vigilant, he hears a ramp being built up toward him. First, he blocks off any further ramps with his cone. After his first shot, he doesn't commit to a 50-50 fight. Instead, he plays defensively, going for the same wall plus roof combo we showed earlier. With some good reactionary building, he holds high ground from these guys. With both his enemies playing the low ground, Razor is able to quickly reposition and fall down behind his opponent here for the knock. He can't finish the kill, so he swaps focus to the last remaining player. This guy makes the right decision to go for the revive instead of contest high ground, so Razor responds by pressuring their box. Considering that it's a 2 versus 1 situation, let's talk about the mistakes this last player is making. He's missing multiple chances to place pyramids and block off Razor. We've talked about it a lot so far in this video, but structure control in fights is vital. Had he placed a few pyramids over Razor whenever possible, he could have shifted the flow of the fight in his favor. Instead, he goes for shots, and Razor responds by building up over him and finishing him off. What helped Razor drop 24 kills here? Yeah, that's right, 24! It was a combination of defensive gameplay, high ground control and build fights, and lots of flanking. With no materials at the start of the game, he's using the camera and peeking mechanics to early house fights. After getting mats, he starts finishing kills a lot quicker by utilizing combos and going for structure control. In situations where he doesn't have the upper hand, he begins looking for ways to confuse and separate his opponents so that he can single them out for the kill. With how powerful aim assist can be, you think that would be most controller players' biggest strength. But I think Razor just showed us that you can still do really well with a build-oriented playstyle. Seriously, he almost never uses L2 spamming. Instead, he focuses on closing the gap, using smooth and deliberate building to create openings and control the fight. If he played with a controller on PC, we would think he could easily be regarded as one of the best controller players out there. But for now, his fans want console gameplay and he is delivering it to them. Alright guys, that's all we got for today. If you guys like this video, make sure that you like it and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, we want to hear them, so make sure you drop them down below. If you guys want to find me on social media, you can at, at Daniel Lammerman. Thanks so much for watching guys, and we'll see you guys out there.